Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at the five worst cards in Hearthstone, and I'm not just talking bad cards, I'm talking stinkers, you know, cards that you are more than safe to disenchant, cards that you've probably never seen in your entire time playing, and cards that just aren't worth the digital paper they're printed on. First up, we have Poison Blade. It is a two mana, one attack, three durability rogue weapon that says your hero power gives us plus one attack instead of replacing it. And I will say right off the bat, I think this is a super, super cool idea. You know, one downside with the rogue hero power is that once you equip a weapon, it's essentially useless, right? This weapon explores the idea of making the rogue's hero power still do something while you have a weapon, right? So I think this is a super neat idea, and I, it's something I wish Blizzard would explore more, but it's just awful execution. The main reasons for that is it's just super, super slow. It takes so long to ramp up to a reasonable amount of, of damage, especially compared to more modern cards. And to show that, I wanted to compare it to some other cards of similar mana values. So just to set the baseline, Poison Blade by default is a two mana deal three damage, or say you play it, you hero power once, it is a four mana six damage weapon. By comparison, you have Hooked Scimitar, which is a three mana eight damage weapon. You have Self Sharpening Sword, which is a three mana 10 damage weapon. Or you have Swordfish, which is a three mana 12 damage weapon, which also dredges and gives a pirate to attack. So comparing it to cards like this really shows you just how inefficient it is. And what if I told you this card was originally printed at four mana? <laughs> When it was first released in 2015, up until 2023, this card cost four mana. As I just talked about, it's absolute shit at two mana. At four mana, it was beyond unplayable. So once again, to summarize, super cool design. I really wish this is something that Blizzard pursued further, but just super slow, terrible execution. If you have any of these, you are more than safe to disenchant them and get the Hunter Dust. At number four, we have Predatory Instincts. It is a four mana druid spell that says draw a beast from your deck, double its health. And this is just terrible value for the mana. If you were to compare this to some other similar cards, you have Peaceful Piper, which is a one mana one one that tutors a beast, or Living Seed, which is a two mana spell that tutors a beast and reduces its cost. You're essentially paying three mana to give the beast you draw six health, eight health. It just goes to show you how bad this card was for the cost. And it's just not worth it and it's so slow. My only guess is they maybe created this card intending it to be in some kind of combo deck where you would have one or two very specific beasts in your deck you wanted to draw with this, but it just never panned out that way. Personally, I just cannot remember a single time ever seeing this card played, but it only gets worse from here. Next up at number three, we have Shatter. It is a two mana mage spell that says destroy a frozen minion. And this is just super, super conditional removal. Blizzard has always tried to push freeze effects with mage and they, for the most part, just never really panned out. You know, you can compare this to some similar cards like Snap Freeze, which is a one mana mage spell that freezes a minion if it's already frozen, destroy it. Compared to Shatter, this is essentially an enabler and a payoff, while Shatter is just a payoff and it's one mana less. But then you could also compare it to Shattering Blast, which is a three mana spell that says destroy all frozen minions. So do you want shatter for two mana or do you want to shatter everything for three mana? Just so it's clear, Snap Freeze and Shattering Blast are 100% better than Shatter and neither of them were played either. So I understand conditional removal being in the game, but this is just too conditional. You know, a lot of the freezing effects are also damaging the minions. So that damage is kind of going to waste and the effects that only freeze minions for the most part just aren't worth playing either. But I will say, keep trying Blizzard. You know, they keep printing freezing cards and freezing payoffs. Maybe one day they'll work. But for now, Shatter's trash and Frozen cards suck. Next up at number two, this card was so, so close to being number one. It is Dr. Boom Scheme, which is a four mana warrior spell that says gain one armor and it upgrades each turn it's in your hand. And I think it goes without saying that this card is incredibly slow and the rate of return is just awful. You know, you compare it to something like Ironhide, which is a one mana gain five armor, which shows you this card would essentially have to sit in your hand for 20 turns just to match Ironhide. And Ironhide's garbage. Ironhide is not played at all. And then you have something like Heavy Plate, which is a three mana spell that gives you eight armor. It also has tradable. And once again, this card would have to sit in your hand for 10 plus turns to be anywhere close to being Heavy Plate, and it doesn't have the tradable effect. In Blizzard's defense, 
Apparently during design, this card originally had a different effect. Apparently it originally had the effect of Hagatha's scheme, which said deal one damage to all minions and that upgraded every turn it was in your hand as well. But towards the end of development, Blizzard decided that Warrior's, you know, board clear and removal toolkit was just too strong. So they gave the effect to Shaman and instead changed this card to this piece of shit. And to give them credit, the game director at the time did say in hindsight that the card was too weak and that it should have been three or even two mana. But I will say even at two mana, this card wouldn't be played. You know, though, I, I really do wonder what would it take to make Dr. Boom's scheme playable? I don't think it's as simple as a mana cost reduction. So if you have an idea, let me know in the comments. H how can we make this card playable? Last up at number one, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Purify. It is a two mana priest spell that says silence a friendly minion, draw a card. And to fully understand this card, you need to set the stage a bit. You know, at the time this card came out, Priest was in a really rough spot. They had multiple expansions where they just didn't have a good deck, a good identity, and players were really wanting and waiting for some good Priest cards. So imagine you're starving on an island somewhere and Blizzard shows up and gives you this to eat. Players were not happy as a result, understandably. And to this day, if you search Purify on Reddit or YouTube, you get so many results of, you know, people complaining and talking about how bad this card is. And Blizzard publicly acknowledged these complaints, surprisingly, with a post talking about their thoughts and design decisions with this card. And the outcry and response from this card eventually led to a meme in the Hearthstone community that still exists to this day, where Ben Brode alluded to a Unicorn Priest deck that maybe still had yet to be discovered. And to this day, you will still see Unicorn Priest jokes nearly 10 years later. And I think that's why this card has to be the number one worst card, simply for the legacy it left behind. And fun fact, this was actually the first card excluded from the arena pool, which was unheard of at the time and just shows you the precedent this card set. But that'll be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. You know, did you agree with these choices? Do you think there's some worse cards out there? Do you think these cards are good? Uh, if there's some deck that maybe utilizes these cards, go ahead and post in the comments. I'll see if I can make it work. But stay tuned for the next one. And thanks for watching.